uh, this evening of having Steve Grossman, who's our current treasurer of Massachusetts and who is now uh, publicly running for governor. Uh, Steve, it's really great to have you here. I couldn't be more pleased. Uh, Jeff and I have known each other for many, many years. I've been uh, interested in being on the show for a long time, and I'm proud to have followed my two sons, David and Ben, who run Grossman Marketing on this show. Uh, it's not often you get a chance to follow your sons on a show like this of this caliber, so it's a it's a thrill to be here. Well, they they did raise the bar. They are probably the best family business interview we've ever had on the show. Only in terms of how well they get along with each other. It's really quite wonderful. I listened to the interview. My wife and I listened to it one night, and we were mm -hmm. very very proud. Needless to say, well, you deserve a lot of credit. Thanks. And uh, I hope that you come back here in a f in a few more years, and we give you even more credit. And uh, congratulations on running for governor. Thank you. And uh, there must be, you, you must have a vision of what you really, wh why you think this is an important thing for you to do. Because this is a sacrifice. Not only is it, a, I guess, a good job, but it is a sacrifice to become government, governor and work for the people of the state. Uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about what, why you think it's important? Well, this really goes back four years. I'll take your listeners back to 2009. We were in the middle of the worst recession in 75 years. The treasurer at that time decided to run for governor. There was an open seat for state treasurer. And I said, I can do this job. I've built a business over 35 years. We've created jobs. We've met payrolls. We've managed money. I borrowed money from banks. I've even paid the money back on time. So I thought that I could do something because entrepreneurship in government is something that people don't normally think intersect. They really don't think government is entrepreneurial. And I really set out to demonstrate in my candidacy for state treasurer that you could lay out a vision for the people of this commonwealth in terms of the way you manage their money and the way we brought new ideas into government. And because I had been in small business for years, our family business, as some of your listeners know, was started by my grandfather back in 1910. It's 103 years old, fourth generation family business. I became involved in the business after I got out of the Army in 1969 and ran the company for 35 years. And I was always in the business of innovating because static doesn't work in business. You have to continue to reinvent yourself. Right. So what I said to myself was, because small businesses are in such dire straits in 2009, I'm going to go around the state and have roundtable discussions with small business owners and I'm going to ask the small business owners one question. What are the roadblocks and barriers you face, and how can we in government help remove or lower those roadblocks? And when you ask people that question, and I took my father's advice, my father always said, Steve, you were born with one mouth and two ears. Try to use them in that proportion. People gave me answers that made sense. Help us reduce the cost of health insurance. Help us reduce the burden of permitting and regulation that is creating problems in our business. Time is money in any business. Give us technical assistance. I have a great idea, but I don't know how to put a five-year cash flow statement together. And finally, access to capital. Access to capital. And I thought about that. And when I became state treasurer, I asked one question. Where are the Commonwealth's reserve deposits? Your money and my money. You would probably be amazed to know that 60% of our money was sitting in banks in Europe, Australia, and Asia. And I said, this is wrong. Fundamental principle, Massachusetts taxpayers' money should be in Massachusetts banks to loan to creditworthy small businesses right here at home to create jobs. So when I became treasurer, we created a new program called the Small Business Banking Partnership. And we put up to $5 million, now $10 million, in any community bank that's willing to loan money to small businesses with a focus on our older industrial cities, particular focus on women-owned, minority-owned, immigrant-owned, and veteran-owned businesses, no quotas, what's happened? We've now deposited $317 million in 52 banks, which have now made, in two years, over $800 million of small business loans, over 5,000 loans. So the question of how do you bring a new idea that doesn't cost the taxpayers a dime into state government that's never been done before to create small business growth, economic development, and jobs. And I want to take that philosophy to the corner office as governor of the Commonwealth and bring the same kind of leadership into government in a different job than I currently have. Uh, you know, I think